Hey everybody, it's Martha Munizzi. Hope everybody's doing good. This is my first time, I believe, going live on YouTube. And I just had something on my heart today. It's been on my heart all day. Um, actually, more than all day, the last couple of days, I've had a message on my heart that I feel like the Lord has been giving me. I've been writing notes and just writing some things down. I don't know if you're like that, you know, when you feel something being spoken to you from the Holy Spirit or just something that seems like a message is just trying to get through you or an idea comes to you that's just resounding in your heart. Um, I've learned to pay attention to those things. I've learned to pay attention when something, uh, an idea or a thought comes to me and really sparks, you know, my, my heart or my spirit or my creativity. I've learned to stop whatever I'm doing and lean into that moment. And um, so I've been doing that the last couple of days. I really felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about something specific. And I just wanted to take a minute and share it because I feel like it's a word for right now. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah, behold, I'm doing a new thing and now it springs forth. Can't you see it? And so, you know, I, I want to be a person of now faith. Our church, Epic Life Church, we're going to be doing a series uh, in January called The Future Starts Now, you know, and um, and what does that mean for 2023? What is what is God saying? And sometimes, you know, we're asking God to do something great and God speak something great to me. And it could be just in your every day going about your day, going about your work, whatever it is you're doing, that God could drop something very simple in your heart that could be a word of transformation for your life or someone else. And so I've been writing notes down the last couple of days and um, I'm going to be preaching on Sunday at our church, but I wanted to just share this. I wanted to jump on here at YouTube. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It's great to have you guys. Everybody's jumping on. Um, and here's the, what the word of the Lord that came to me. And again, it's profound because it's scripture, but it's probably not something that you haven't uh, heard before. Hey, everybody. This is so exciting. I'm so glad you guys are joining me on YouTube. But here's what I felt like the Lord spoke to me so strongly. And then I'll get, I'm going to tell you what it is. And then I'm going to give you kind of some context of why I feel like the Lord showed it, uh, shared it with me. And it was very simple, but it's the scripture found in Luke 16, Luke 16 and verse 10. And it says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be with, be dishonest with much. I'm going to read that again. Whoever can be trusted, this is Luke 16, 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Another translation says, when you're faithful with the little, God will give you more. When you're faithful with the little. And I really believe that's a next level message for, for me. I, I believe it is for many of us that sometimes we want God to do something big for us, but really what God requires of us is something small. And that is not always easy to do because, you know, it's easy to do the big thing. But can I be honest with you? If we begin to stare down the idea of doing something big, 99% of us would look at the big thing and probably, you know, reject it or think it's too big or it's too impossible or it's too crazy or somebody else is, is more qualified. But if we look at next level as something small, then it's doable. It's not that God's doing anything small, but what God requires of us most of the time is small. And let me explain why. Because when you are faithful with the little, God gives you more. When you're faithful with the little, God gives you more. It's what we teach our children, right? If you clean up your room, if you put your toys away, you know, then I'll give you some, you know, a treat. I'll give you a reward. If you do the little thing that I've asked you to do, I'll give you more. And God is the same way. If, if he's requiring something of us, it's really pointless for us to ask God to do something big when we haven't done the small thing right? And that's what God's really been speaking to me about. It's, it's, it's so exciting to think about the big things God's doing, but it's not always exciting about the little thing that God's requiring of us. But how, but the truth is that's where your next level is your next level. Let me make sure I'm talking to people that are 
that are like on board with this. Hello, everybody's just saying hello. Okay, I'll keep going. And and here's the thing. I begin to really think about it and ask the Lord. So God, you're going to withhold something from me that's bigger than what I have right now because I haven't done the small thing. And the Lord said, no, I don't withhold anything. I'm not a withholder. I'm a, God is a generous God. He's a giver, but he's good. And that's why we don't always see the things that we're asking him for as quickly many times as we want them because he loves us, not because he's mad at us. He's not withholding anything. He knows if you don't do the things I've asked you to do, God can't release more. It's out of love. It's not out of withholding anything. God is a God of generosity. And what happens, and here, here's what I, I realized. Let me give you the, my illustration. Because one of my children, has they've been looking for a home to invest in. They want to move and they want to live in a home and own something. And we're like, this is so exciting. You know, we're homeowners and my husband and I are home builders for years. My husband built homes for many years. And uh, we love that. We love building and, and you know, starting from scratch and and just finding something and, and maybe, I don't know, turning it into a beautiful home or, or really building something from the ground up. So we do understand the building process. So when we're looking for homes for one of our children and that's something they want to invest in, we think about the environment. We think about the location. We think about the price. We think about what work needs to be done to get it where it needs to be. And so this last week, we've been going around our city in Orlando and looking at places that are available for sale. And it's been a lot of fun. We'd love to do that. And uh, some of the homes are are older. They were Some of them were built in the 70s and early 80s. And, uh, and the neighborhoods are much older. And so as we're looking at home after home, condo after condo, you know, what's a good spot? I'm just really, really taking, taking the time to look around it and, and say, it's not just about the living, uh, living inside the home. It's what's surrounding the home. Because if you live in an environment that's just, you know, sometimes it is what it is and it's what you can afford and, 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 and all of those things I understand. But if you're living in a place where it's very run down, it's there's trash everywhere. No one's kept it up for years. It just looks like it's all, you know, just worn and, and hasn't had a, a, a coat of paint or an update in 35 years that will eventually if all your neighbors, everybody around you there, it's just a, you know, broken cars in the driveway and everything's just really trashy. Eventually that becomes your um, kind of your surroundings, the atmosphere that you come home to and uh, every day. And you, and if we're not careful, many times we can start kind of uh, bringing, actually grow familiar with our surroundings. It's so easy to grow familiar with what you see, what you see really can impact your vision. It can impact what you're asking God to do in the future, what you're reaching for. And so I, I told my, my son, I said, you know, this is a great part of town, but I don't know that this is the great environment for you because I want you to walk outside every day. It doesn't have to be perfect or wealthy, but that you feel like, okay, we're stretching. I'm growing. I'm, I'm surrounding myself with people and neighbors and, and a surrounding that's going to stretch me and not diminish me. And I don't think sometimes we realize how much our environment can change our moods. I'll give you another, I'm sorry, change our moods and also change what we're reaching for, change our level of faith. I remember years ago when our kids were little, um, we had built a house and I love this house. It was a dream house. I'd raise my kids in this house. And um, it was crazy because, you know, when you've got a bunch of little kids, three toddlers running around, it's hard to keep anything clean. And I was volunteering full time in our church and I was the worship pastor. So, you know, it was just a, a crazy busy time. My husband was working long hours building houses. And so I could never keep my house clean. I could never stay on top of it. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had a season like that. I, it was just really hard. And uh, I remember always feeling bad about it. I felt bad about it. There's toys everywhere. The kitchen was always a mess. No matter what I did, I just felt like I couldn't keep it clean. But in the back of my mind, I knew that if I just worked a little bit, if I managed my time a little bit better, I could have kept my house a little cleaner. I could have, done, I could have. Now I was hard on myself, but at the same time, I, I was like, oh, you could have done better. So what happened was, is we wanted to move to be closer to our church. Our church had moved and we wanted to move out of this home. 
we didn't really want to, but we wanted to be closer to the church. And um, so we sold the house and rented a home. The neighborhood was nice, but the house was not what I was used to. Now, before you think I'm being, you know, bougie or whatever that is, or, you know, it was a, it was a nice house. It was a really nice house and I'm grateful for it. But God taught me to be grateful in this house and for whatever, whatever stage I'm in to be thankful for it because God always has more, but he's always testing your faithfulness. So the last house we're moving out, all the boxes had been moved out. The kids had gone home with my mom. And so I'm in this house and I told my husband, I'm just going to spend the last couple of hours and I want to clean everything. I just want to be here. I'm going to miss this house so much. I want to be in this house. I'm going to clean it. He said, okay, you know, we can bring somebody in. They can scrub it down to make it look nice, but you know, you don't have to do it. I said, I'm going to do it. So they all left. And I remember I opened the refrigerator. The refrigerator had so many memories because, you know, my kids were little. That's where Danielle, our Earl's daughter, came sliding through the kitchen and fell and busted her chin and I had to get stitches. You know, I started having all these moments. I was reminiscing about the memories of this house. I opened the refrigerator and the, and the refrigerator was just filthy. It was at all the, y'all know what it is when you drop like jelly and gooey stuff that just stays stuck on the bottom of the refrigerator and the drawers and all, it just was, I mean, I had to get like a scraping device to get it all off. And I just remember scrubbing and crying and saying, God, I did not take care of this house like I should have. And I know I was busy and I know I had little kids, but I still should have done better. And God, if you ever give me a house like this again, I promise I'll take better care of it. I promise because I didn't know what was next. I didn't know when I would live in a house like that again. We were downsizing. You know, we were trying to save some money. We were, we had, we were renting for the first time ever and moving into a rental. And I just said, God, I, I just I just forgive me for not taking better care of the house. And that has stuck with me for all these years. And, and although I'm not the cleanest person in the world, I have done my best to do better. As God gave me more, I've done better. And the season we were in the other house, we rent, rental house for two years. I just, God had to teach me in that season, be faithful in the season you're in. Be faithful with the little that I give you. And it really taught me that no matter what season God has me in my life, he could put me in a big home. He could, you know, I could have everything that I've ever wanted. If I'll stretch my faith, God will give me more. And faithful in the little is so, so important because what will happen, and I, this is the notes that I've written down. I've, I've been writing notes all week because what will happen is you can easily grow familiar with a limited environment and you're hoping for more, but you're not believing for more because you've not been faithful in the little thing that God's called you to. Now, let, let me help you with this. Let me break it really way down. Okay. So I'm looking at these houses and I'm wondering, like we looked at three more yesterday and it was clean. It was nice, but I saw places in some of these homes that I thought, man, it keeps resounding in my mind, faith with a little here's how you can be faithful with what God's given you. You've got a house. You don't like it. Okay. It's not the house of your dreams. You've got a car. You thank God that it gets you where you want to go. If you want to go to the next level, here's what I encourage you to do. And here's what God's speaking to me to do. Be faithful with what God's given you. Take care with, of what God's given you. Some of the houses that we looked at, they just needed to be cleaned up outside. They just needed to just get, here's what you can do. Just, Open up a drawer and clean it out. Be faithful in the little. Okay, I'm getting in somebody's business because let me be your mama right now. Okay, G go in your car and clean out the, the clean out the, the trunk. Just do one thing. Okay, get up every day and make your bed. Go buy new pillows at Ross for your bed. I don't know, whatever it is, clean out your closet. Ask yourself if my pastor. If somebody I really admired stopped by for a cup of coffee, would I be humiliated at the state my house is in? I'm not talking about messy. My house is not perfectly clean. There's dog hair. You know, I haven't done all the laundry, but I wouldn't feel like, oh my gosh, I don't want anybody to see the way I live. Now, I, I'm not trying to judge anybody or make you feel bad. I'm talking about if you have a 50 year old house that hasn't been upgraded. Okay. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. OK, my daughter's moved into a house last year. It needs new counters. It needs new floors. It needs new everything. And guess what? They were like, whatever. We're just happy. We're on our own. We'll be fine. We're, you know, it's not 
for me, I've lived 55 years. It's not my standard, but they love it. They've learned to be faithful. They love it because it's theirs. They love it because God opened a door. It, they love it because it has a miracle story attached to it. They love it because they're they're investing in their future and they're being obedient. They love it. And little by little, they're rate, they're saving money. They're getting people to come over and do favors. And, and we're like, look, we'll help you paint it, but that's it. And they're being faithful. And God is stretching their faith as they're faithful. Here's what some of you need to do. Just go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you can buy paint and just put a new paint of coat in one room. Here's something you can do in your house. Y'all know how it is when you have those doors. I don't know if you have white doors or whatever color your doors are. I don't know what it is. I've lived in my house for three years. We've built a house and every door has the stains on it where the handle is, where people just grab it and shut the door or open the door without grabbing the handle. All of our sticky, all of, you know, that area on the door that just kind of gets black from our dirt hitting the door open with our hands. Like, I don't understand that. Just clean that. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I don't know why God is showing me this and maybe you're tuning out right now, but I'm, what I'm telling you is something that is going to help you go to the next level. Why? Because if you don't change the environment of what you see, it's going to be hard to see with eyes of faith. So we're asking God to help us see with eyes of faith, but our natural eye gate, what we're seeing on the level of our natural eyes, we're not happy with it. It's not where we want to be. So what we need to do is stop and just be practical. God, I'm going to be grateful with the little that you've given me. It could be your health. You're not happy with where you are in your health. You're not, you know, in shape. Do something every day that is faithful to the temple that God gave you. It could just be, okay, I might not be, be able to just go, you know, cold turkey after Thanksgiving and go crazy and just go from one day to the next and eat healthy. Just eat 50% more healthy tomorrow than you did today. Just do that. Just don't eat that second bowl of ice cream. Y'all, a few days ago, <laughs> I, I was around the Thanksgiving holiday. We got up, I had pancakes. Then, then we went and got a, after we had lunch, we went and got a milkshake at steak and shake then, or actually Chick-fil-A. Then we came home and ate dinner. And then I ate a big bowl of ice cream. I'm like, I've had four desserts today. Okay. How about I just break it down and just have one dessert, right? I don't have to go crazy. What is that? It's saying, God, I want to go to the next level. I just wanted to go to the next level. I'm not going to beat myself self up over it, but I'm going to take a step closer to what God's called me to do. And what will happen is if you're not careful, your surroundings, you'll begin to, 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 to focus on your surroundings and you'll start settling for less. This is, this is so important. Don't settle for less than what God has promised you, what you're believing God to do in your heart, because just naturally you'll start believing what you see on the natural level instead of seeing with eyes of faith. It's just, it's what happens. It's what happens. And, and here's what you can do. If you're going to stretch your faith and believe God for more, start writing down what God shows you. Start writing down what you're, when you have a day where that, where you're in God's word or you're, you're spending time in God's presence and you've got music on and you feel that surge of faith, take that moment and say, God, what are you saying? Write it down. I listened to a podcast today of a friend of mine who shared that, write it down, write it down, write down how good God's been to you. Write down, because if you don't write it down, you'll forget. We're good at forgiving. God's people, the Israelites, they were good at forgetting. They forgot the good things God did. They forgot the way that God made. They forgot the incredible miracles that God did for them. If you don't write it down, you'll forget. And in the forgetting, you'll repeat cycles. You'll just repeat cycles because you're not remembering. It's so important. Write it down. Go back. Maybe print it out, keep it next to your, your bed at night or in the morning so you can remember about what, of what God has done for you. So write down, if you want to go to the next level, write down what God has said. That's being faithful in the little. Why? Because God whispers small little uh, whispers in our ears of hope, of joy, of, of answers. And when we're faithful in those moments, that's being faithful in the little. Then all of a sudden, I'm telling you, last week, I just started writing this down. Martha, be faithful with the little. If you'll faithful with the little, I'll give you more. 
I'm not withholding. It's not about me with be it's not about me withholding. It's about you not stretching for more. That's what God said. The first thing I did, I was in my car and I just wrote these words down. It came so strong. Faithful with a little. And then as I wrote that down, God began to speak more. And he said, I don't withhold. You're not stretching. I said, okay, God. He said, if you don't stretch, you'll start getting used to having little. You'll get used to it. And then you're making excuses for why you have a little. You have little. But if you stretch your faith, if you'll believe for more, and if you're, you'll hope for, for more, you'll start speaking more. And then you'll start believing what God is showing you. Not with eyes of, of, of uh, what you see on this natural level, but of eyes of faith. God wants to give you bigger vision for your life. He wants to give you bigger vision for your future. Don't settle for less when God has so much more. And I'm just telling you, if you've got a house, be faithful with it. If you've got a car, be faithful with it. Clean out your refrigerator, clean out your closets. Just take one thing. I'm telling you at the end of this year, let's not ask God for more than we're willing to do for him. Let's uh, let's go back and say, God, okay, I'm believing you're going to do great things, but guess what? The future starts right now and the future starts with me. And there's a lot of things I don't have to wait on. Sometimes we get so frustrated. I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting. No, 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 no. Let me help you. We are never waiting on God. He has poured out every blessing he's going to pour out. He has given us every word, every promise, every hope, our healing, our future, all of it. He is giving it all to us. It's all written down in his word. It's up to us to stretch our faith and to release it into our today. The future is right there. The future is on the other side of your obedience. So clean your house. I, I know. I'm telling you, it's 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 the same. I, I'm I'm answering this call for myself. For myself, go clean out that closet. You know what? It could be that there's things in that closet that are that are weighing you down, but it'll be a blessing to somebody else. That will unlock greater blessing for you as you give. It could be that there's somebody. That is just wishing. Can I tell you, as much as we're praying for somebody to be the answer to our prayers, there's somebody praying that you can be the answer to their prayers. I I don't know about you. I don't want to be that person that's always got my hand out asking God to just bless me. When I realize if I'll be faithful with the little that I have and give it away and bless somebody and and, and speak uh, the, the, the language of the future of what God's called me to do and then act those things out. Blessings just waiting on me. It's just piled up, but it's waiting on me to be faithful right where I am. Some of you don't need to just bail and find another church. You need to stay faithful. You're you're frustrated. That's why you don't need to leave. You're mad and angry at somebody. That's why you can't leave. Can I help you today? You need to be faithful in the little, because if you're faithful with the little, God will give you more. I don't know about you. I want more. So God, where do I, what's the little thing you need me to do? What's the little thing you need me to say yes to? What is it? Because I'm not about to miss out on what God has for me. And so treat everything you have like the blessing it is. Treat your church like the blessing it is. Treat your pastors like the blessing they are. Treat your spouse like the blessing they are. Treat your home like the blessing it is. Treat that car, treat your job, like treat it. Don't just talk about it. We're good at talking, but actually treat it like the blessing it is. You might hate your job and hate your coworkers. You know what for Christmas, you know what your little is? To take everybody $5 Starbucks gift cards. Just bless them, shock them all. They may be trying to get you fired. They may be making your life miserable. Just go to Starbucks, go to Publix, go to a, a gas station. Five dollars. It'll cost you $25. Maybe more than, no more than 50. You could do that. Bless somebody, somebody in your church, somebody that you work with on your dream team that just, man, I don't know. Your pastors, do something to bless. Don't always be, God, I'm just waiting for you to do more. I just want you to do more. No, no, be somebody that is willing to say, God, I'm going to be grateful for what I have I, right now. Tomorrow, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to treat my life like the blessing it is. Did you know I, somebody, I think my daughter sent me this. 
And this really resonated with me. And we think about we think about pigs and the pig sty, but truly pigs get a bad rap because we always think of pigs as disgustingly dirty and they're gross. But I watched this video of pigs in their in their pig pen. And the lady who owns them, she's a farmer, she owns them. She said, actually, pigs get a bad rap. They're really not that dirty. As a matter of fact, they keep their homes very clean. And she did a whole video of how they bring in clean hay. They actually, uh, they are, she showed them in this field with these beautiful yellow flowers. She said, if you'll notice, the pig is not eating the flowers. She had several pigs. None of them are eating the flowers. But if you go in their home, they have uprooted a whole snout full of flowers and they decorate their homes. Y'all, pigs decorate their homes. I don't know if every pig decorates their homes. She said they do. I've never heard that before. But she said it's their natural tendency to make their environment more beautiful. And she showed, she said, look, look over here. There's a pile of those beautiful flowers right over here. She's brought them into the corner of her home. And I thought, okay, y'all, if pigs understand how important the environment is, we as people need to understand your important, your environment is important. If you want to go to the next level, you need to think about that. You need to think about that. And we, we you know, we just want to do everything that's like outwardly visible and we want God to bless us. But many times it's that it, it's just a beautify your surroundings. Start there, buy a plant and then don't let it die. Don't kill it. <laughs> Maybe you need to get a plastic plant, but do something that says, I'm going to the next level. What does that take? God, I want I want a new house. I'm going to take care of the house I've got. That means I'm getting up every day. God, I don't want to be that you didn't give me more because I didn't take care of the little that you did give me. I don't want it to be that I miss out on the greater thing that I'm asking you to do because it was just a simple, small thing that that I could have taken care of that would have honored God and honored what you've already given me and not take for granted what God's given me and, and, and ask God for more. It, he'll give it to you. You don't even have to ask him. He says to ask, but he's like, if you're faithful in the little, you'll, you'll be ruler of much. Why? Because God wants to make sure that you can handle it because what he wants to pour out on you in 2023 is bigger than what you can imagine. But we've got to change those little things. You guys, it's little. So much of, of the big doors that God's opened for me just were on swung on little hinges. Did you know that? Big door swing on little hinges. It's faithful in the little, right? Don't settle for less. And don't disqualify because you go, well, nobody sees it. It's it's unseen. That's not that's not. The Bible doesn't qualify that. The Bible says, if you're faithful with the little, you will be given more. You'll be ruler over much. I think there's a few more uh, translations that might even be better, but it it's just, it, it's so important that we, if you're faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful with the big things also. And that's what God's looking for. He's just looking for people who will be faithful. We live in a world where there's so much just craziness. People aren't faithful to each other. They're not faithful to their jobs, not faithful to church. They're not faithful to God, you know, quitting things right and left. And they just don't have longevity. And I don't want to be known for that. I want to be somebody that's known for principled living and longevity and character. And I'm not perfect. You can come to my house and I'll go, sorry, y'all. You know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, clean up my kitchen completely, but I've learned over the years that I do the best I can. I, I, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna every day do something where I know, God, I'm being faithful. It could just be reading your word every day. Okay, so you don't have thirty minutes, but you got five. Get up in the morning and and the night before, decide. Okay, this is the message. This is the 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 planning Bible plan that I'm gonna be listening to. Get it ready the night before. Why? Because I want to be faithful. I, I'm ready for God to do something great in my life. Stretch your faith. You know, I know people that have lived in such a small environment for so long, their home, their life, the way their life is ordered, that they've just gotten used to it. And they just, they, they have learned to live disappointed and discouraged. 
And then they say, I guess God just didn't want me to have more. And that's just a lie from the enemy. I would hate to think that my life would be limited because of my limited thinking. And I want to challenge your thinking. It's not the big things, guys. <laughs> it's not. I wish it was. I wish it was one person that I hired or one person that, you know, came in and changed everything. It's not. It's it always goes back to are you being faithful with what God's given you? Are you being faithful with the little? Are you being faithful? Are you treating your home, your spouse, your job, your car, your life, the blessings you do have as the blessings they are? Because when you do that, God says, OK, you see it. You're being faithful. I can give you more. I can give you more. And 2023 is a year of more. I'm believing God for more, but I'm not going to ask God for him to do more and expect him not to require more out of me, more giving, more faithfulness, just faithful in the little. I hope that helped you guys. And uh, I just want to encourage you, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you about something, it could be at work. It could be, you know, drive it in the car, whatever it is, grab your phone and just write it down or grab a voice memo and record it, whatever you got to do, and then come back to it. Come back to it because it'll minister to you. It'll speak to you. That word, that song, that idea could be the, the word that God is birthing in your heart. That will be something that feeds you and encourages you six months from now, a year from now. But when we're not faithful and we're not paying attention, we're not writing things down, we're, 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 we'll miss it. We'll, we'll lose it and we'll forget what God has done. So I encourage you these next few days, spend time thanking God and remembering what he's done. Be faithful in your praise. Be faithful in your thanksgiving. Y'all get it. Y'all know what I'm saying. I love y'all so much. Thank you guys for joining me on this live. I did it 31 minutes. All right, guys. Love you guys. I'll be back and we'll be talking more about this in the next few days. Have a great night.